Yeah. Boom. We are live. What is going on, folks? Welcome to the stream. I'm here with Meet Sung. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Just uh... Sung, we're going to change your name from Meet Sung to Scalper Song or Spy Song or something. Because yeah, gotta... Meet Kevin, for those of you who don't know, paper handed all of his stocks. He sold everything. He sold yeah. all of his stocks. Paper hand. I know. Yeah, they uh I don't know. I gotta change it to something, but it has to be catchy, right? It has to be like something catchy. We'll think of something. <laughs> Cause if I if I go like spy song, and what if I stop trading spy? You're not gonna stop trading spy. <laughs> it, it's too it's too much fun, it's too easy. You, you make too much money, it's not it's, it doesn't make sense to yeah. to stop trading spy yeah. so folks before we get started neither sung nor i are financial advisors we are just two people on the internet who like to trade stocks and we want to talk about it <laughs> yeah i mean yeah we're just we're just doing this for you know entertainment what does it say down there entertainment purposes, purposes, purposes only, only. And, and and so that we make sure that none of you have any more excuses because i everyone's like oh my god i can't deal with the stock market anymore it just keeps going yeah. down yeah, you're still gonna. It, some of y'all still gonna have excuses, but that's all right. Um, but you know, same thing like the Tennessee Titans that just lost. If you're a Tennessee fan, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. A moment of <laughs> was, silence for you. Yeah, it was it was a bad way for y'all to end, end that game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna turn around. So before we get started, before we're I'm, I'm gonna screen share. We're gonna discuss exactly what we do, how we set up the indicator and everything. One thing that I do want to say is. With what we're going to be teaching you here tonight, I personally don't suggest, again, if I was going back in time, I personally don't suggest you going and starting to do this on Monday. I suggest you paper trade this for a week or two, the strategy, adapt it to yourself, learn how to do it, figure out and finesse it um, to your own skill set, to your own needs, because you're putting money on the line in an extremely volatile market. This market is very up and down, right? We've seen it go wild. And I want to make sure that you folks are ready and are doing this in the best possible way. So I just wanted to put that caveat on the front end before we turn on screen sharing. And then I'm going to put spy on the screen. We're going to talk about it and exactly what indicators you got, right? Song, we're yeah. ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I mean, like, and if you're, look, honestly, if you're, if you have that itch to like, hey, I don't want a paper trade, right? Just trade like one contract, right? Like, don't, you know, like, don't don't go extremely heavy into it you know like again <clears throat> um we're gonna try to keep this as simple as possible right but um as simple as it may sound or may appear it does um take some practice and skill behind it in order to stay consistent with it so 100 <clears throat> percent, because like <clears throat> these things First of all, one thing, the statistic that's out there is 90% of day traders lose money. That's because of a lot of different factors that go into it. So we're going to try to show you the simplest way to do this. But again, this, us showing it to you, we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> so for us, it's like second nature. We can see it. We can understand it. And the other thing that I want to kind of talk about for two seconds before going through this is one thing that I'm seeing a lot in traders is please stop playing those zero data expiration contracts, contracts that are expiring today. They're extremely volatile. I see the screenshots. I love that people are winning and making thousands of percent, but they're extremely risky because they can flip on you and they can just wipe out and go to zero. So can you tell them if they don't, I, I become like the, the old grandpa here. <laughs> you're, you're the cool guy. Can you tell them? I'm not the cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, um, sometimes, uh, I understand everybody has different reasons for, you know, buying weeklies or, um, whatever the case may be, you know, or if, if they're <coughs> trading spy or QQQ or something, or <coughs> one of these ETFs, like they, they buy, um, uh, you know, contracts that expire the same day. And <coughs> for me personally, like, that's just not something I do just because, um one of the things one of the luxuries that i want to that i don't mind paying for is time right um and and, and the time is just as an additional cushion i guess you can say right um yeah. <coughs> although we and are you can hold trade. them overnight you can hold these yeah. like for example uh, uh thursday going into friday thursday evening i purchased spy puts because i was like all right <laughs> the market's gonna tank even more tomorrow <laughs> 
had I bought the puts that would have been expiring that day, for example, I'd have to sell them into close, right? But I got to hold them, and you make more money as the thing tanks even more, and you allot yourself more time. We're not trying to attack anyone. This isn't meant to be like a personal attack on anyone. Tom, don't feel personally attacked. If you can do it, if you got the cojones of steel, go for it. But personally, I think it's way too risky. I just want to put that out there. They look; Those contracts look extremely attractive because they're like, oh, it's only 30 bucks. Screw it. Let's do it. But yeah, but you're 30 just, bucks can evaporate. Like, yeah, yeah, you're just you're just gambling at that point, you know. Like, <clears throat> I see some people like that are buying Tesla. You know, Tesla twelve hundred dollar calls on Friday that expire the same day. Look, like, I mean, it's really risky, right? So, I mean, um, I mean, some people win big on it, but you know, I I, I want to minimize playing options is risky in itself, right? It's <clears throat> so it's leverage so i just uh i want to minimize the risk exposure as much as possible yeah so we're going to screen share one thing if you guys can do just do it a solid light up that like button if you haven't subscribe if you haven't and share this video with someone who you think this could they could benefit from this this is recorded this will be available forever on the internet until the internet exists so you can watch this so we're going to screen share spy uh a weeble and you can kind of see that and um, oh, I already have it up. Okay, give me one second. Sung, is this view better, or do you want to do this view? Um, probably that view right there, just because it gives a bigger sure, <clears throat> perfect view. For okay, so else. I'm gonna put up. So the indicators that we use are RSI, MACD, VWAP, and Bollinger Bands. Those are the four that you want, right? Yeah, actually, the probably the other view. Sorry, because then you can't really see the indicators at the bottom. No worries, buddy. And if you want, we can completely hide ourselves and just show the screen. Yeah, or yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I, I let's don't go like, like this for now. If we need more <laughs> space, we'll go to the bigger one because I want them to see when you speak and and all that stuff. All right, so we got VWAP and good old the magical Bollinger Bands. And yeah. I know you like the three minute chart. Yeah, lately I've actually been using the two minute chart, but I, I'm confirming on the three minute chart. So okay, do you want me to bring a two minute chart for you too? Yeah, yeah, you got it. So I, I'm actually a little bit different. I use the five minute. I've, I've, con I've got, I the three minute fakes me out too much now, so I use the five minute. So I, when market opens, I use the three minute, and then once we're around like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, I switch to the five minute. All right, so I'll let you run through your methodology, and then I'll run through mine, and then we'll just have some fun. Somebody's like, I'm just. I glad saw, it's don't not. don't read that. Don't say that word. Don't <laughs> say that word. We'll get kicked off. The hold on, hold on. It's I'm using um. Let me turn off my Fubo, Fubo TV. Oh, he's pumping now. He's pumping. Yeah. He's pumping. <laughs> Which Saved right. by the Bell character are you? Uh, let's see. Which one would I be? I'd probably be the principal. <laughs> yeah, the principal. No, I just. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get, let's get to business. I know these, guys are, these guys are hungry for it. Let's go. Yeah. So, uh, quite a few people. I mean, um, let me pull it up on my end. Um, basically, you know, one of the things, and this is, it's going to sound real um, simple, but, uh, but again, don't jump into it, right? Like don't just jump into it blindly, um, paper trade it, practice it. But if we go to, um, let's say spy <coughs> on Friday. Song, let me just what? answer. Uh, we got a question coming in real quick. It's important before we go into it. You do not have to be a uh, first of all, Weeble is completely free, uh, but you do not have to be a subscriber or have an account to be able to get this platform. It's 100% free. You could just download the app. You don't even have to have an account to be able to use it. It's a free charting tool. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just oh, want no, to make sure. No, no, you're good. So if we come to, um, let's say about 10 20 a.m., uh, right about there, right? right? So what I was looking at is <coughs> a few different things. So, um, on Friday I had, uh, entered into spy calls. Um, although, although spy was, you know, I've, over the, the course of, uh, several days has been taking a pretty massive hit, you know, the way that I'm trading, um, I'm not really overly concerned with, you know, the overall markets right now. Right. I'm, I'm day trading and I'm scalping. <coughs> options excuse me if i have a cough so <coughs> but um so what i'm looking the at man's right, getting over roni rona so give him cut him some slack yeah. if he coughs yeah sorry um 
So right about 1020, um, you know, what I was looking at was uh, the first thing I was looking at was the RSI, right? And at, at that point, I was watching the RSI closely and I felt that it was creeping into that territory where it was oversold. <clears throat> and and then in addition to that, <clears throat> right about that time, I, I was looking at the MACD. And uh, the, the simplest way to put it is I'm just waiting for the MACD to start curling, right? <clears throat> That's all I'm doing, right? <clears throat> On a two minute, three minute chart. Two minute chart really for the entry, three minute chart just for a confirmation. So I'm just waiting for the MACD to start curling upward, right? If I'm buying calls, right? And that might sound very <clears throat> simple, but that's what I'm doing, right? I'm just sitting there um, <clears throat> watching it, waiting. And at some point, I find an entry. <clears throat> now, um, you know, typically to time an entry is impossible. I don't care what people say. To time a perfect entry, impossible to do, right? So what I am doing is I am scaling in in certain percentages, right? So going into the trade, I already have a plan on how many contracts I plan to buy total, right? <clears throat> so let's say... Um, my total plan is to buy, you know, I'm just going to say 40 contracts, right? Let's say I have my plan going in. Hey, I'm going to, uh, I, I might, I could potentially buy up to 40 contracts. <clears throat> my initial entry might be five contracts, right? I might buy five contracts and then, um, and then I'll wait, right? I'll, I'll continue to watch, wait to see if it reverses it, to see what I'm seeing, um, <clears throat> plays out and if it bounces right and if if i'm in a position where i am down <clears throat> um let's say 10 15 percent at that point i will continue to average down and scale down right if and, again and, and, let me just jump in that's if we're still <clears throat> showing the trend that we still have a condition to turn nothing's right. gone too crazy in the market yeah. we didn't just get like a massive knife down stuff like yeah. that yeah if, if, if i, I apologize the... if i interrupt you a few times no, no, no. Some caveats in there <clears throat> He's kind of like the assistant teacher here. Just kind of like, hey, no just, just. And, and, um, and so as long as all the indicators are progressing in, in the same direction that that was the original reason why I entered the trade, I will just average down if needed, right? So, um, you know. I entered into this specific trade. I entered into some spy calls, and and I I think I averaged down twice, right? Um, I averaged down twice, and um, <clears throat> so the initial entry I bought X amount of contracts. Um, let's say I'm just going to use the number forty, right? Just because it's uh, I don't want to disclose how many contracts I actually bought. He bought a million contracts. I bought a bunch. <laughs> I bought a bunch. That's all I'll he say. He popped up on unusual wheels, just in case you guys so, are curious. Yeah, uh, my my yeah, it popped up. So, um, <laughs> on Cheddar Flow. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <coughs> no, so Cheddar Quant. He popped up on yeah, Cheddar. So, I, I I made my initial entry. I averaged down a couple times, and then I, I continued to wait, and then um, and then it bounced the art. It, it bounced from that oversold territory, the RSI, and the MACD curled, and it and I just kind of wrote it all the way up. Now, what I'm using is the v, I'm using the VWAP indicator, right, as a resistance or support. And what I mean by that is, if it's trading under the VWAP, right, I am using that <clears throat> going into the trade as a resistance, um, as a resistance level, right. So basically, it could fly past VWAP, but me personally, I don't care, right? Because I am I'm anticipating that that is going to be heavy resistance. Because we're on uh, a downtrend. The because we are, today, we can see correct. it comes down and hits. Like here, we are, we're just going to imagine this hasn't happened yet, right? Because it's, it's still 1020 in this world that we're playing in. But as you can see throughout the day, even in pre-market, 
we've been hitting VWAP and it's been resistance throughout the day. So Song is correctly using that as a resistance point that he's expecting for it to hit and break down again. But as you can see, it's been going to VWAP multiple times throughout the day, Correct. which is, again, this light green line that we have right here. And and if you trade SPY enough, you will realize that it will use VWAP as a clear resistance or support level multiple times throughout the day, right? Multiple times throughout the day. So um, especially within the first, I want to say, three or four hours of the market open. And, he, and what he's referring to there is if you've been noticing in the markets, the markets especially these days, volume dies around 11, 12 11 a.m., 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you just kind of watch there, a lot of your stocks, the SPY does still have its flow. That's what makes SPY fun to trade because throughout the whole day you'll have volume there. But other stocks kind of die at that time. So basically on, on that trade at 1020, I, I, I alerted in the Discord, hey, look, I'm entering in these call options for SPY. Um, this is my entry price, right? This is the limit price that I'm setting. And then I uh, and then I alerted two more times saying, hey, this is I'm averaging down at this price, bringing my cost average to this price. Right. And so <clears throat> um, and that's as, that's me within the discord trying to be as transparent as possible on my current cost basis. And um, <clears throat> that way, kind of everybody can gauge where I'm trying to exit. But the biggest thing I think with. Um, how I'm approaching trading SPY or let's say QQQ is the same is that I am not, I have zero intention of look, I'm not looking for a 60%, 70%, 100% runner. I, I'm not doing it right. My mentality is very simple, which is 20 to 30% is an excellent trade, right? That is a home run hitter 20 30 percent it sometimes it could be 10 or 15 percent right <clears throat> and the biggest thing is is that i am truly scalping these plays in order just to compound my gains right and um sorry let me turn the coffee off it's okay off. um so <clears throat> so you know, so a lot of it has to do with the psychological aspect of it as well. You know, not getting overly greedy. It's okay to leave a couple runners, but to make sure that you are positioning yourself to take profits and and lock in your gains, right? So, if you, it, so basically, if I had to run through this, right, around 1020, I started scaling in, averaged down twice. I, let, me, let me see if I can. Uh, I got I got them for you here. If, you, if you're, oh, we don't have the contract numbers here, but I can tell you that you filled initially. Is it cool if I read the number? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you we were playing SPY 455 calls for an expiration date of 124. Uh, you said scaling <coughs> and slow limit order at 0 0.34, uh, watching for a reversal on VWAP. And then at 9.56, you said spy calls filled. Yeah. And then at 10.12, you added more spy calls. Your average cost was now down 2.3. And then you added your another leg, which, uh, which would be <coughs> averaging more into it at 10.23, which would be at this point here. Into, the, into this, we're literally at the bottom, as you can see here. Folks, you can see these lines are getting much closer to each other on the MACD, which means we're getting ready to reverse. We're getting ready to flip. And then, um, okay, you can keep now. Now keep going into the process before we yeah. talk about the, the take part. <clears throat> yeah. So basically, whenever um, uh, you know, <clears throat> and and at this point, I did not buy my entire position that I uh, planned on buying. Right. So, like, let's say I had a, uh, it, I, I went into the trade with the mindset of, hey, I'm going to buy 500 contracts. Um, I, you know, I think. Well, I'm probably going to say it now, but I'm, I, I think I, I bought a total of like 350 contracts, right? So, um, way to give it away. <laughs> oh, my, my bad. All right. So, so basically, you I posted scaled... it on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> oh, did I? Oh. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything when you started. You know, like, I'm not going to say how many. I was like, buddy, you posted it on I, Twitter. What are you oh, doing? The IRS is watching. I, I forgot. Eh, it's, okay. it's all right. It's all right. I pay my taxes, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You heard that, I, IRS? 
We pay yeah. our taxes in this. Yeah. Country. Yeah. Way too much. Way too oh. much in taxes. Just, just throwing out and throwing out. Dude, so dude, you're in Texas. You're lucky you're not in New York. Oh, I know. I'm blessed to be in Texas. So, so basically, um, <coughs> you know, um, after I entered, uh, uh, the MACD started reversing. It bounced off, uh, the, it bounced from that oversold territory just as um, that we were anticipating, right? And then, so I was watching it kind of um, creep up towards VWAP, right? So, right when it hit VWAP at um, <coughs> right about 444, that's when I started scaling out. It was about, um, at that point, I think it was, uh, I was up like 30 something percent. But I held on to a few runners, but uh, ultimately, like uh, my overall gain on that one trade was probably around 35, 36 percent. Right. Fantastic. But um, but the thing about it is like I am not uh, I am not waiting or holding my entire position more than likely when I start uh, t locking in gains, I am selling 80 to 90 percent of my position. Right. And so, if, if you're to me, if you're locking in gains, you want to you, you want to always sell at least seventy to eighty percent of your position. And it's okay to you know sometimes it's okay to sometimes um, you know uh, leave a few runners, but you don't you know like sometimes when I hear people say, "Oh, I'm leaving some runners," and they only sold 20% of their initial position. Well, your runners are going to make you go overall negative <laughs> if they tank, right? So runners are meant to be, you know, only a couple, you know, uh, right. only a small percentage from your initial posi overall position total, right? So, right. Um, but that's, that's really it, right? And so I'm looking for, I'm using those indicators, VWAP, <coughs> MACD, those are the two main ones on a two to three minute chart. And the reason I'm going between a two to three minute chart, right, <coughs> is for specifically for limit order entry price, right? Like it's it's hard to find in uh, a what I want to set my limit order entry at, right? And so so a couple things like the way I have my screens set up, right? Some is, quick question coming in from the chat. Do you always uh, buy and sell with limit orders? I I buy so on it depends, right? So um buying limit orders all the time. If it doesn't fill, I, I wait, right? If it doesn't fill, right? But I I use limit orders <clears throat> on the buy side all the time. When I'm selling, I do <clears throat> when it is specifically with spy, when I'm selling, I tend to do market orders uh for for my initial sell right when i'm selling my initial you know 60 70 80 percent of my position the reason why is because when i'm selling to the market the spread the bid ask on spy is relatively close right mm -hmm. it's it's not a huge spread so you're not really losing that much right <clears throat> but i'd rather i'd much rather it fill immediately and be locking those gains rather than me sell sell at a limit order and um it might not fill you might be a penny off and it'll never fill right, right. and so <clears throat> and that that happens all the time so now if you're trading something like tesla don't ever do a market order <laughs> because the spread the spread is just it's ridiculous nasty. Right? yeah it's like i mean you're talking about like let me let me show them let me show them what a spread is so that they can see it so the spread is this, the, the space between the bid and the ask so if you go to options let's go to calls for example on tesla you can see the spread for example for these 945 calls is you'll be paying 60 dollars and 30 cents which which is really six sixty point thirty times 100 and then the ask is 62.15 so as you can see here there's a bit of about 104 a uh, hundred. Uh, I don't want to do math. I hate doing math on live. Let me just up uh, uh, six thirty. So you're paying a diff. You're paying one hundred eighty five difference in this spread. If you were to do a market order <coughs> of this, you'd be paying one hundred eighty five dollars. So like right away, like you're well, you shouldn't even be playing these because the open interest is crap. But yeah. 
the spread is what can kill you with this. So that's why Sung is a thousand percent on point. You always yeah. want to buy the bid. Look, I I give you a, a perfect example. Like um, a long time ago, probably last time, not a long time ago, but about <clears throat> about nine months ago or so, I I was in a trade for Roku, right, and I was pretty heavy into this trade. And during the during in the middle of the trade, um, they had made an announcement that uh, that Apple, you know, they, they were going to do something with Apple, right? It was like a a, a a new thing that came out, and it made Roku it was the button sick. on the Apple, remote. yeah, that button, the button, <clears throat> and then button sent it, <laughs> and then Roku just just it shot up, right? And um, I was uh, I was. I remember I was driving at the time and I was like, holy crap, right? Like, like I was up like 200%. And I, from my phone, I just hit market order sell, right? And that 200% gain was only ended up being like 20%. Yeah. <laughs> because the spread was so wide, right? Right. And and so, so uh, but, uh, but again, to ans answer the question, <coughs> like on SPY, you know the bid and ask is so close mm -hmm. that uh it's typically it's typically within uh, um within pennies within a right. couple pennies um lately currently in current uh market conditions on the put side um the spread has been getting a little bit um wider i guess you could yeah. say and so um you know uh, you just want to be a little bit mindful there but uh but you know but selling market orders um you know, if you're scalping it for 20, 30 percent, you're still going to have decent gains, regardless of whether you sell it limit or market. I just want the comfort of knowing that it's going to fill right away. Right. Um, so but, that's, but that's right. also why um, <clears throat> um, some platforms, um, this uh, some platforms you want to be careful of. Right. Because, like, let's say you're trying to trade options on Robinhood. Right. And nothing, you know, I love Robinhood's platform, right? But if you're trying to sell it, they don't have a functionality for market order sell, right, on options, right? And so, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I think personally, I, I think Weeble is the best for it. That's just my opinion. So I want to walk them through how I trade because I took the same trade you did. I came into it a little bit later than you because um, I was in spy puts, which is funny because <laughs> I added, I added spy puts. <laughs> on Wednesday, the night before. I'm not sure exactly at what time I got in or alerted. I, I won't waste too much of your time, but essentially I added somewhere here, very close to very close to close within a few minutes. I like to use the three minute and the five minute chart. Um, that's just my personal setup. So I got into it here because I was confident that the market was going to just keep tanking into tomorrow. That was my intuition. And again, I marked it as when I alerted it in the Discord and the Patreon, I was like, this is way too risky. This is risky. Go into it with a small position if you like it and then get in. So I added an initial position here and I kept it overnight, which I hate overnighting contracts in this market. But I was like, we, I was like, the, the Biden speech had happened. Market sentiment was extremely negative. I was like, all right, I'm confident holding these. And if I don't, big deal. I'll just take a small L, no big deal. So I held these into the next day. And then I was like, what we were discussing earlier, I was monitoring VWAP being resistance for SPY and SPY having resistance on VWAP. I'm going to turn Bollinger Bands off for a second because I want to show you what I was also monitoring. I was also monitoring the support level of SPY in pre-market, which I'm indicating with this blue line. Support and resistance levels within pre-market have been shown to be extremely, extremely important for SPY and all stocks realistically into this market that we are in now. And as you can see here, SPY was respecting the support and resistance for a long time. So I was watching it. I held my I held my puts. I had puts here going into it. The market, you had the small little fake run up here. I added a few more puts on this small run up as we were hitting VWAP. I expected a rejection. I added more puts, like a real position here on these puts. And then it started to tank and come down, come down, come down, come down. And I was I began selling as we, I sold a chunk of it as we broke support here. And then I sold a lot of it as we were coming to this point. I saw Sung around this time, around the 1020 point alerted that he'd added his final leg on SPY. I was looking at SPY. I agreed with Sung. I said, hey, I agree. RSI is oversold. SPY doesn't stay. If you take a look at this, this bottom line here, 
this dotted yellow line is the quote unquote oversold point, the sub 30 point. It spy doesn't really stand <coughs> oversold during market hours for long, even if it's small little pops, you'll get small little pops that happen again. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed by any means, but that's kind of what we were thinking there, and it made sense. So around this point here, I added with Sung. I want to give you guys the exact time that I added as well. Uh, 1023. I replied to Sung. I said, it looks ready to bounce. Everything's oversold. So I added as well. Um, that's 1023 would be somewhere between these two candles was where I added. So I added. They went red. Added a little bit more. And then as you can see here, we started to bounce beautifully. And as we hit VWAP, sold more. And then as we saw, as you can see here, we came down a little bit, retested the support level, bounced off the support. We were still holding some, the quote-unquote runners, hit this resistance level. By the time I was getting to the resistance level, I was getting out. I, I didn't care to hold for this and the little pop here. I was fully out of the position because, again, like Sung said in the beginning, the goal is to make the 10, 20, 30% and compound those gains over and over again because yeah. – we're not looking for the thousand percent, hundred percent, two hundred percent runner that we can take a screenshot of and put on, on Twitter and be like, "Hey, this is fantastic!" Yada yada. We did a thousand percent. It was just that, and it was literally just using three things, right? Support resistance, which I count as one unit. VWAP, which I count as the second thing, and then our MACD RSI combo, which these two should be really using combo. So as you can see, as it turned, and then it made sense again. You could have played puts one more time as you hit this resistance level. You saw this resistance level hit. It broke through it. It was kind of bouncing here again, yeah. playing theoretical right now, right? <clears throat> and then, boom, rejected this uh, this resistance level again. You could have added puts here, and on this candle on the way down, added more puts. And as it kind of broke down, you could have probably made another ten to twelve percent yeah. on this and, on the way down. And what's 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 funny about that specific trade right there, right, is that, <clears throat> and it happens to all of us, right? It happens to be, but like I entered that trade for puts. But um, but I second guessed myself, and I, I cut I cut it. I was down like six percent or something. I was like, oh, I don't like the way it looks. I cut it right, and um, <clears throat> and I just didn't stick to what I've been, you know, my method. Right, I veered away from what I've been doing and my and and just I guess trusting myself. Right, and so. <clears throat> And that could have been, I think some people took my alert on it and held it. And I think they probably, they made like 40, 50% on it. <laughs> but, but, you know, um, yeah. So somebody said I should have waited for Biden to talk. Yeah, I should have, but. I, mean, you I know, had no idea he was going to talk. Yeah, I, I had no idea he was going to talk because, you know, a, a lot of things like, um, uh, you know, catalysts and different things that are happening in the world, like especially when Biden, like personally, I, I don't think anybody gives a crap whenever Biden talks. It, it's, it's the same thing. He says the same thing, half the stuff you can't understand. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's political here, song. Yeah. So, this is YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. Go Biden. <laughs> so, Woo. Yeah. Google yeah. loves Biden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, Oh, uh, oh, one question. Only issue that uh, Solaire of Astoria has, only issue with that method is the PTD rule. Yes, uh, I, I do agree with you. If you are under 25K, a lot of people uh, feel like, uh, you know, they're restricted by P uh, pattern day trade rules. Um, what I personally do is because uh, I have two accounts. Uh, I'll tell you exactly how I do it. <clears throat> I have two accounts. Um, I use uh, my Weeble account for my day trades and scalps, and I have my long account with Fidelity. Um, I am always moving, withdrawing money from my Weeble account and moving it to my long account. Uh, all my gains, I, I'm always moving it, right? So my account balance is the same, right? Uh, I, I keep it very flat with Weeble. Um, <clears throat> the reason I say that is, is because I do not have, I do, I do not ever carry a balance over 25 K in my Weeble account. Right. I do that intentionally, um, to limit how much I can trade on a daily basis. Right. Um, but if you have a Weeble cash account, you can day trade as much as you want, as long as you are trading on settled cash right, right. <clears throat> and so and on options 
the cash settles the next day. So you could close out contracts on a Friday and your funds will be available to trade again, settled by Monday, right? And um, it's just something that I do personally um, for myself because it keeps me in check, right? And it continues to grow, um, grow my long account right with fidelity and so <clears throat> and it allows me to trade and whatnot because i don't care i don't you know you see people posting oh i got millions of dollars in this account i don't care right because that's at not the end smart of the day, either because your account yeah. only insured up to two hundred fifty thousand. yeah it's just yeah not so, smart. because at the end of the day like wealth long-term wealth is built by not day trading and scalp accounts and swing accounts they're built by your long-term portfolio, having a right. solid long-term portfolio. And that's the goal, right? <clears throat> so that's my opinion. Um, but so if you're trying to get past that pattern day trade rule, um, that's something if you know if you want to look into. But yeah, just having a Weeble cash account, uh, you can do it under 25K. It, you, you can do it with $5,000, $1,000, $500. It doesn't matter, right? Just just so I can explain to them a little bit about the whole settle fund thing. So, for example, if you have in your account like a thousand bucks, right? And you used a hundred bucks to trade, and then you made a hundred and twenty, you made a twenty bucks on top of that hundred bucks. That hundred and twenty bucks will become available to you tomorrow. But with the remainder of your balance, your nine hundred dollars that you have in your account, the remaining nine hundred dollars that's cash that's settled, you can still continue to day trade and cycle that money throughout the day until well you're going to be out of settled fund and and we will will throw you i think it throws a thing at you it's like hey you're about to use unsettled funds are you sure you want to do this and then i think if you do it three times then they'll kind of slap you on the wrist and like you cannot do this anymore so yeah. Yeah, it'll so, sell the next day so it's essentially like a like a little loophole through having yeah. to day trade being able to day trade with less than 25k in an account which is fantastic in this month yeah what everybody has every broker has different rules on good faith violations on what their restrictions will be we bowl the first time, I think they'll slap you on the wrist. The second time, if you have a good faith violation, like you sell on, like you bought something with unsettled cash and you sell it um, the same um, before it's settled. I think the second and third, fourth, up to like five times, they'll, they'll just restrict your account to only trade on settled funds, right? So, <clears throat> you know, like um, honestly, there was a time where, um, just for my own discipline, right? Like I got a good faith violation on purpose. <laughs> I did it intentionally, right? I remember. So I, so I had, and, and the reason I did that is because I didn't want to take my gains from a trade and over trade, right? So I got, I went and just, I, I got a good faith violation on purpose in order for my account to be restricted so I could only trade on settled funds, right? And, and it would settle the next day. Right. <clears throat> you know, uh, those are just some things you, you, you also have to keep in mind whenever you're day trading, a lot of it is discipline and psychological. Right. Um, you know, indicators are pretty simple to, to follow. Right. But, um, you know, uh, overall, you, you have to be disciplined with it. Right. So right. I want to I want to run them through another example. Um, and I want to show them something. You can have fake outs, even if you're using your MACD and RSI, you can have fake outs. And you can see an example of one here. The MACD looks like it wants to curl here and go green on you, yeah. but it fakes out and goes, nope, we're still going to go down. So again, it's not a foolproof thing. One thing that I do to kind of guide me as to what the master movements are happening is I'll use the five minute chart. I'll see the direction, the overall direction of where things are going and kind of through my five minute chart, I get kind of a broader move of where things are going versus the three minutes. So I'll use the three minute and I'll use the five minute as well to give me kind of an idea of where we're headed. I'm sorry about all this movement back and forth folks. So, and then one thing that I also like to look at is the 30 minute chart, the 30 minute chart. Again, I don't know why it keeps going back and forth. The 30 minute chart will give you a nice indication of where you're going to curl. As you can see here between 10 30 and 11, you've got these green bars and you can see that this is curling up as well. So it's kind of a good broader image of what's going on is looking at these larger time frames. even the 15 minute chart. Another fantastic one, as you can see here on the 15 minute chart, it starts to curl as well around to 1045. You could have still gotten in again. You, you didn't, the song's methodology was just very, very smart using the two minute, three minute. 
get you a much better entry. But as you can see here, it curls up right here. Boom, on the 15-minute chart, you can see it starts to go up, and then you can kind of have that there. So it's good to have these different time frames. Do not use the one-minute chart. It will fake you out. Look at yeah. look at the one-minute yeah. chart, for example. It just It's just too bouncy. It's just too much yeah. going on. Boom, yeah, boom, the, the one-minute chart, I, I've heard some people say, like, hey, just use the day trade. Use the one-minute chart with the VWAP and stuff. Man, the one-minute chart to me is pointless. That's like that's like the most pointless chart like, there is. Like, I mean, you might as well just go one tick and just you know, just let me go pull one up that chart. Yeah, <laughs> just go one tick chart, right? And so, there <laughs> here's the one tick chart. If if you ever want to be like under hypnosis, right? Just go to the yeah, you know, go to the uh, one tick chart and watch it for thirty seconds and see what happens. <laughs> <coughs> one like, tick is like every single transaction gets yeah, one tick. It, yeah, it, it's the funniest thing in the world. So, but yeah, I mean, the one minute chart is very misleading. You can get faked out very quickly on it. Uh, personally, I think, um, you know, for to find an entry um, and confirmation, uh, two to three minute chart uh, works well for me. Um, might not work well for everybody. Again, you have to find like what you're comfortable with. Um, that's why I say I, I would you know, suggest to anybody to really, <clears throat> you know, either paper trade or just practice with a very small amount of contracts, right? Like yeah. one, one con and when I say small, I mean like one contract, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and you um, can paper trade on Weeble. As you can see here, like I'm hovering over yeah. it. There's a paper trade tool built into Weeble, or you can literally <coughs> set up an Excel sheet, or you can literally use paper and do that. I don't suggest anyone even that one contract thing is risky in my opinion because i know people that are getting into this not everyone's getting into this game with like oh i want to use i got a thousand dollars i could just get rid of and don't care about your average retail trader is coming into the market with maybe 50 100 bucks so i don't want you guys to go into it take a huge l in the learning process because i know most people don't want to do that and they're like well i don't want to i don't want to quote unquote like take an l here uh I'm going to lose my money and people get discouraged and I get it. Like no one wants to lose money. No one wants to take an L like that. That sucks. No one wants, to, I don't want, you don't want to lose money there, but paper trade. It's okay. You have nothing to prove to anyone. Also, if you're in a trade, again, this has nothing to do with what we're discussing here. Just in general, if you're in a trade and the stock starts going against the trend, let's say, let's say you were playing this here. Let's just go to the two minute chart. The example, the fake out that I showed you guys. So let's say you were here and then you're like, oh, the MACD is going to curl up and we're going to go green here. And you buy calls on this one and you get confirmation that's going to continue to keep going down. Cut the trade. Some people yeah. I've seen, it's like their ego or it won't let them and they'll just ride the thing all the way down. Cut the yeah. trade. Cut the trade, especially if you're in Webull, if you're and you can do the quote unquote pattern day trading without being out. Of, cut the trade. There's, you have nothing to prove to anyone. The showboating and stuff you see on Twitter. It's just showboating. You got nothing to prove to anyone. Yeah, I mean, there's, look, it's it's honestly locking in, locking in gains is so important, right? But cutting a trade is just as important, right? Like, um, because I think everybody, even outside of like spy and you know the, some of the ETS, like everybody has like their you know favorites, right? And so. You know, like it, you might like NVIDIA or Apple or whatever the case may be. So, you know, you just want to be careful that psychologically you're just not, you know, um, that you're staying disciplined. And if you have to cut, cut it, right? It, you can always re-enter later, right? <clears throat> but you, the worst the worst position you want to be in is assuming that um, because you're in the emotional attachment to it you have some type of emotional attachment to it so and then you don't cut and then you're down 60 70 80 percent right, right. <clears throat> because at some have point a stop you, loss to do that for yeah you. that's another thing is like take the whole emotion out of it set a stop loss whether for whether for your risk tolerance is 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent say yours not for me personally 20 percent is my risk tolerance on a slide <laughs> trade um other stocks, I have a much lower risk tolerance on those. But for example, SPY, 20 to 25%, depending on how comfortable I am, set a, set a stop loss or watch it and cut it when it hits that. You have to follow your own rules to protect yourself because you're playing a quote-unquote game with real money and it can have the ability to destroy you or it can have the ability to 
build you up, and the whole goal is to build you up. So if you cut it, you've got nothing to prove to anyone. No one's standing over your shoulder. Your Twitter followers aren't like, oh, this idiot just lost three dollars. Screw this guy. Like, no, who, like who gives a crap? Like, you have nothing to prove to anyone. This yeah. don't. There's no point to doing yeah. it. And then, um, you know, uh, uh, one thing I will say is, um, whenever you're like, don't get me wrong, like sometimes I'll trade, <clears throat> I'll trade spy right at market open. Um, but again, to me, that's more of a lotto than anything at right at market open because you have no confirmation on directional, uh, on direction. Right. So, um, you know, the, the strategy that we're talking about, you want to wait, you know, a, a good while after market, you know, at least 30 minutes after market open, or maybe even an hour after market open. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, there'll be times where like market right at market open. I might buy some calls or puts depending on, um, you know, what direction I'm, I'm guessing it's going to go. Right. But it, it's merely a lotto. Right. So, right. um, because you had, you know, that, so be careful buying on a market open, <clears throat> just, you know, wait for, wait for the dust to settle. And this strategy um, works for any stock that you guys want to use. Yeah. It's not like it's just to spy, like, uh, someone in the chat, double AO is saying just joined. Oh, I'm not sure what you joined, but, Welcome to the to the stream. It says Mara, for example, like we can show you on Mara. Now Mara is affected by the price of Bitcoin and all that stuff. But if you run the same example, you can see here, like you, I don't know what these support resistance lines are or where I drew them, but I can, again, I would be looking at pre market support and resistance, which would be here and here. Really going to open. I really focus on like the the first like hour going into before as my support and resistance. This is clearly a bull trap here with everything that's going to the markets. I You wait a little bit. Then you see it starts cracking. It cracks VWAP, comes down. You keep waiting a little bit. Your MACD is still green. Your RSI is not going to help you here, but your MACD is still green. Fakes you out, goes back up. Cracks VWAP again. You can see your MACD lines are curling onto each other. Enter some puts. Boom, ride it down. Get out before you hit support. As you can see, it hit support and started to bounce. Enter calls here if you want to. If you want to play it again, enter calls here. You've got confirmation of support here on this candle. Enter cars here on this candle. Ride it up. Sell some into it. Hold some runners. Oh, congratulations. You broke above. Boom. You went to your actual at market resistance. So you're at market. Okay. I don't know why it's just a double line there, but you can see here at market, you have this resistance point here. Went to that resistance, hit it, and rejected it again. So you had the potential to play puts and calls bang bang twice by just using macd support and resistance and vwap we didn't even realistically we didn't even use much of vwap here we just use support resistance and macd so you can see this strategy can be used across the board again theoretically yeah. very easy but in the but in the heat of the moment when all you have is this you just have to be patient let the candles <clears throat> print for you let the, the candles start showing up so that you can get kind of an idea of where things are going as your macd is starting to curl as your indicators are starting to curl use those and kind of help the guide you it's okay to pay a little bit more and wait for confirmation than to pay yeah. too much and then get quote unquote screwed the only the only thing i would i, I okay i don't want to say recommend but the only thing i would never um use this i guess method on right this trading style is like low float like pump anything plays. Yeah, don't, don't, flow, don't trade whatever. don't trade options yeah, on penny stocks. I don't I just don't do it. I just yeah don't like there yeah trading options on a lot of penny stocks is very dangerous right like um it might sound good because they're you know extremely cheap or whatnot but <clears throat> for some of those calls or puts to go in the money are extremely unlikely highly unlikely and and so you just want you you, you just want to you know like me and Ryan, like we, uh, we talked throughout the day during the trading day. And that's another thing. It's really good for you to have, um, uh, somebody else that trades like intraday to bounce, um, what you're seeing off of just to get a different viewpoint. Um, it's really important, right? Don't, you know, don't, don't think that, <clears throat> you know, if you have somebody that you can just reach out to, whether it's within a discord or whatever, or on Twitter or whatnot that you can bounce ideas back and forth off of. Um, it helps a lot, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, trading on a lot of the mega cap, large cap stocks, like a lot of the blue chip stocks, 
Like those to me, options are the best on those. That's just my, that's just my opinion, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like it's a much safer bet, right? And not gambling, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> but yeah, that's I mean, that's really what you know. A lot of people kind of reached out to me and asked me, you know, what what I'm doing on a daily, uh what I'm doing on a daily basis with spy. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Neil. Uh, Shout out to you, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You know, very uh, appreciative of that. Um, you, you said, I'm lost in options in general. And that's fine. Neil, that's fine. Look, if I, I think a lot of people, especially in today's market, uh, think that they're missing out on something when it comes to options and trust me you're you're not right it's you know and so if if trading commons works for you then then stick with what works right there's a lot of people that get burnt just jumping into options trading that don't know what they're doing but there's there's nothing wrong with trying to learn it right but only if it appeals to you right um but it has to interest you right and and take take your time this is not this is not a race right to the finish line right there is no end <laughs> right so yeah and I, you... I think the big key that i tell everyone with options <clears throat> trading and neil thank you again for your for the super chat this yeah. i think it's like the second time we've ever got one but i appreciate you um is that 99 percent of options trading 99 percent of it is technical analysis which means learning how to read these charts right as you saw here, we use technical analysis. We entered and exited the same technical analysis that you can use for commons. You can use here. Options just move much faster because they're highly volatile. They're leveraged, right? If you take a look at here, what is an options contract? Options contract is you're controlling 100 shares of the stock, right? So right here, if you bought, for example, a, a Mara call for $23 expiring February 4th, you're controlling the equivalent of $2,300 worth of this stock because it's 100 times 23 for only only $187. You're massively leveraged. So if you just do the math and divide it, right, 2300 divided by 187, this is a 12.3x leverage right here, right? Because, again, contract is crap because the open interest is low. We're just doing an example. You can see here this is a 12x leverage position, right? So it's going to move. 12x up and down with volatility it's going to be sharply moving that's why like we i highly recommend the first thing you do and i teach this we teach this in the options uh course i, I put out a post to the patreon members and i put it out there and said hey look if you, this is the map to becoming a trader is learn technical analysis and watch the technical analysis course learn these little things so there's videos on what's macd what's rsi how to do it how to scalp it all this stuff learn that then watch the options videos and start to paper trade for two three weeks so for example coach he's one of our members right he's one of our very first members he's been there for a long time and he did this he came to me and said hey i want to learn how to do options what do i do i gave him the plan I said hey this is the plan this is what you got to do and he posted on friday he goes my whole account's up five percent i leveraged myself with i hedged myself excuse me not leveraged with with some inverse ETFs because I know how to leverage now. And I was able to play some options contracts with you guys and I made money. And I, my account's up 5% because he followed the plan. He put in the time. If you put in the time to learn the technical analysis, you put in the time to learn how options move, you paper trade for a little bit. You can do it too. It's not that difficult if you put in the time. Stock market, finance, these things are a one-to-one. -one. The amount of time you put in or the results you will get out. The thing that people unfortunately do now is they're like, oh, hmm. Let me see what I can do. Let me follow Jack, Jill, and Janice and just play their alerts. Play this, do that. You're going to lose money that way. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be hard because you're going to be depending on someone else. But if you learn, you become part of a trading community. You can become part. Don't, you don't even have to join ours. Go join anyone else's. There's yeah. thousands of them out there. Join a community, learn, put in the time, do it on your own, and you can become a fantastic trader. Neil, thank you again for the other super chat. Oh, he yeah. says, uh, I gotta watch your options videos. I'm a year member. Oh, Neil, that's awesome. Thank you. But I totally need to do this. Yeah, I, Neil, I promise you, watch the technical analysis videos first. You and you, also, you guys can hit me up with any questions you ever have. I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, watch those technical analysis videos. It, it's if you look at the post is called a map to becoming a trader, map to becoming a trader, or something like that. <laughs> a map isn't the word. Um, 
if you read that, it says like, do the technical office videos, practice those. You can practice those with your commons as well. Cause I know you, you trade commons, practice them with penny stock commons or just paper trade on commons or literally do that and practice that. And then you can move on to the option stuff and it'll, it'll really get you going and it'll really help you get there because in these kind of markets, penny stocks, as you can see, like the, the penny stock part of the watch list is getting like shrunk to nothing because of how hard it is to find them but options allow you to kind of utilize move up and down song do you have any thoughts on this you can have we got a ton of questions uh, yeah. coming in, by the way we want to answer yeah. them one by one yeah so um look uh option you know options trading to me is um you know i say this all i say this often it, it, it's it's not a golden ticket right it is just another style of trading that is not meant for everybody right and that's fine right but the worst thing that I would like, uh, the worst thing I like personally, I don't like seeing is when somebody <clears throat> tries to jump into options, takes a huge loss and then just quits trading. Right. Cause that's what a lot of people, that's what happens oftentimes. Right. You know, I, I think the more um, you educate yourself and plan and like prepare yourself, um, you know, options trading can be very, beneficial right but that's only if you put in the preparation for it right? right and um you know like eric said uh made a call also if you know how to read the news you can find it so um i, I agree with you there to an aspect um where's this uh, come i'm trying to find it, it it's the one underneath uh neil neil's oh, also okay yeah, yeah so well, oh, by the yeah. way the ones who ask questions above we'll get back to your questions promptly. okay I'm trying to answer and, them and, and so eric i i agree with that um uh back in the day I, I used to trade on catalyst and 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 um I was more of a catalyst and fundamental trader. <clears throat> um and I switched because personally I, I found that um using technical analysis is much more is uh more consistent. Um and then especially with scalping and day trade it's to me it's impossible to scalp and day trade based on catalyst and news right uh, it's it just doesn't fit right to me right that that's more um swing trading in my opinion <clears throat> if you think catalyst is coming up but uh but yeah i mean i know some i, I know some uh individuals that uh trade specifically based on catalysts and potential news and then they do very well for themselves right but um to me it's uh overly risky so real-time news uh, look unless you're like on a bloomberg terminal where yeah. you actually get the real-time news in real time that like for example you might be like oh, disney is going to be opening up their parks tomorrow by the time it gets yeah. on any radar the stock's yeah. already spiked because those bloomberg guys have algorithms that are set to this yeah. algo trading and it's a boom and, and it goes and then by the time you get to it, it's like and, all right we're peaking but, and they're taking profits yeah and even the terminal even a bloomberg terminal right like it's like by the time it uploads on there like <laughs> and it's already too late right most yeah. of the time in my you know so um but yeah i mean uh yeah do you want to get to some of the other questions yes, yes yes so let me scroll up a little bit so we can answer some of these questions um uh this folks says this person says um how do you deal with missing out on good trades i don't i just don't care i don't, I don't, I don't yeah I don't there's care. always if more you, trades yeah i mean if you miss out on one um if, okay so it, psychologically right that, that that's where it comes back to the discipline of it right right look you're always going to miss out on good trades. everybody everybody every day miss out on miss out on trades right like um look <clears throat> people okay perfect example People were posting their gains from buying Netflix puts into their earnings, right? Uh, I knew Netflix had earnings, but I chose not to trade because I, I made a commitment to myself not to trade earnings in 2022, right? I missed out on that trade, right? But I don't care, right? You have to stay disciplined and stick to a plan and you also um, missed out it, on the stress of waiting for those yeah to come yeah up. you know you you know like look once the market closes I sh i'm trying to shut my computer and i'll look at it in the morning right i don't want to and like like all these people bought puts and and banked right but what if by you know i mean don't get me wrong i mean everybody knew netflix was gonna 
<laughs> not have great earnings. But dude, no. <clears> you know what like, the funny thing is? They actually they beat they beat the EPS. Uh-huh. Estimated earnings, estimated revenue was down by a hair. The only reason it tanked was because the their guidance. That was the only thing. <clears> yeah. Because so, had but, they put out like bullshit good guidance, it would have rocketed up and all. Yeah. Those so, have been destroyed. so yeah, yeah. So imagine if they put out good, you know, rate if they increase their guidance, man, it would have been, man, a lot of people would, would you know. They wouldn't have been posting their screenshots, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like your question, like, yeah, I don't, I just move on to the next man. Yeah. I don't. There's always another I, trade. Yeah, uh, Neil says everyone is uh, double sided printing, and I'm just scared. Take your time, practice, yeah. do what yeah. you got to do, and then once you become comfortable, jump into it. There's no reason to fomo into these markets; you'll just lose money. Uh, Terry says, "How do you guys find the strike for your day trade options?" So, for example, for me. I liked you gotta you have to cycle through open interest. Open interest is yeah. the rule. Sung has this rule. I have it has to be over a thousand. Um, and I try not to do the week offs. For example, let's say we're playing Mara calls. As you can see here, out the um playing Mara calls, there's no good open interest until like 28 and 30. Again, I don't want to play for the week off, so I'm gonna go to February 8th. No good open interest here. I'm gonna go to the next next options chain. No good open interest. So I'm really playing the monthlies here. And so I'd probably be doing like $30 if I'm playing calls, which I'm not saying play calls on this. It's just an, a t- an example. I'd be doing like a $30 calls because it has a good open interest. Or maybe even the 25 because it's just a hair under 1000 Yeah. So like, um, you know, some people ask why I went with the 455 calls on the SPY um, uh, compared to as like something closer, you know, like 450s or whatnot. But it was really based on like the open interest. Like that's that's the, that's the main reason why I went with the 455s compared to like 460s or 445s or whatever the case may be. Because the thing about open interest is, by the way, for those who don't know, is you have to when you buy that you can buy the contract at any time. You just have to have someone to be able to sell to. And open interest is low. You're not going to have someone to be able to sell to, and you just you're just going to hold on to the contract. It just will not move. Yeah. Um, Eric says uh, options gains can be huge, but I think it's extremely important to execute your strategy or else you won't be successful. 100% agreed. Yeah, 100%. 100% agreed. Um, Eric says, if also, if you know how to read the new, oh, we discussed that one already. Brad says, I need to start a second or third shift because doing this real time from my phone is nearly impossible. Um, yeah, real time day trading from your phone is extremely hard. Um, I don't know how people trade from their phone. Some people are extremely good at trading from their phone, but like me, I personally, I cannot trade from my phone. I'm like, I will just lose money. Like I, I need to be stationary at my, at it, like at my station, you know, with my setup because you have to be comfortable while you're yeah. trading. Right. You Especially in this market. Cause like a few like weeks ago, you could swing <clears throat> trade and you'd be fine swing trading, holding it overnight. You wouldn't be too crazy, but in this market, it's way too hard to hold overnight. So Brad, I'd say if you can change your shift, go for it. I mean, if, if you have that, that option and you, you believe you're, you can do well doing it. And I, I believe you can, if you put in the time, I'd say, yeah, switch your shift if you have to. Um, so uh, Solaire says, uh, uh, I'm so glad I listened to you and sold my AMC at 50. Knowing how to play it both ways is now okay. This is the first time we've gotten someone who's actually happy about <laughs> selling their AMC stock. So congratulations on selling your AMC stock. Yeah. H. John says, Can you do a video? Uh, or do you have already a video for new members? I will definitely do that. I will 100% make that video tonight or tomorrow morning and put it out there to show you exactly how to navigate the discord and the patreon um it should be fairly simple but i will do that for you in the meantime if you want if you go to the discord there is a channel in there called dictionary i believe it's called dictionary I'll give me one second to tell you what it's called and it tells you exactly what each channel is um it's called server guide and it tells you exactly what each channel is with like a little description but i will do that for you h john i got you and thank you for the suggestion it's actually a fantastic suggestion a Mount Hood biker says, "How do you pick your strike price and which expiration date to sign?" Let's say, for example, let's just run an example play, right? Like, let's say okay. Monday morning, you want to play calls, for example. How do you go about it? Let's say. So, 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 so let's say I'm. Um, uh, so let's say uh, you know it's Monday, right? And um, I, I typically go for um, at, on spy specifically. I bear. I never trade the, the daily, right? Uh, I will always go for the end of the week or, you know, maybe two days out, right? So maybe, automatically right? the January 24th so, are out. So we're looking yeah. at the January 26th or the January 28th. Yeah. And so, so um, like, let's say, 
um, looking at the 28th, right? And and of course, this open interest and the delta and everything's going to change, right? So, um, but and like open let's, interest is doo doo here. Yeah. So so let's say, uh, you know, the only ones that like let's say I went based off of the current, you know, open interest on the 28th, right? Like let's say I was playing calls. <clears throat> I would look at a combination of open interest and volume as well as the, the, the delta now the the problem is like if we went with the delta over 30 cents um you know you could go with the delta over 30 cents but then you have really crappy open interest in my opinion right and and so i would be more inclined to go with probably like if i'm going off of these numbers i'll probably go with the 457s honestly or well, even all the, the way that far out or even or even the 460s right i mean uh, why I not might the, go, why not the 450 song take a look at the 450s. Let me, you got two thousand oh yeah or, or or the or the 450s i'm sorry i didn't even see that 450s has um has good open interest has good volume the the, the the delta is under 30 but it's still relatively high um yeah so the remember spy moves quickly folks so yeah. that that thing's that number that delta so, all your 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 greeks are moving your greeks are I'm, moving and shaking yeah. Yeah, if I'm looking at puts on the put side, let me take a look. It's because the puts are like, juicy. Like, yeah, anything, yeah, I mean, anyone you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like the premium on puts have become so expensive. So expensive. Like it's ridiculous. Like, like before, you can usually you'll usually see a parallel between the calls and the puts. So, for example, like let's yeah. say like ten bucks out. So let's just say the four forty seven. So you can see yeah. like these are three oh two. But if you go ten dollars down to like the twenty seven, the uh, three twenty seven. Let's say three twenty. You can see it's way more expensive yeah. on the put yeah. side like it's calmed down a little bit but it's still it was like on friday when song and i were talking oh my god the, the was, premium was yeah. the song was like it's not even worth the trading for the yeah, it's, not it's, even, so yeah it's, it's not worth it like and so i was like yeah we were talking i was just like i was like man have you seen the premium on the on the put side it, it's just ridiculous right it's just too expensive and so um <laughs> yeah it's um it's just not worth it at some point so um but yeah i mean it, it you know so it's uh, but again that's trading spy right like let's say we're trading um apple right let's do it you know um you know like if i'm trading um like apple for example i'll, I'll probably go with um a couple weeks out right probably go with like february 4th expiration somewhere around there um and then you know again i'm just kind of looking at the open interest like the one one obviously the 180s like stand out the most just because the open interest is so high. Um, but the downside of that is Delta is really low. Yep. Um, but you could easily go with like the 170s. <clears throat> 170s is very appealing. Nice open interest. You're looking at 2-4, uh, right? Yeah, uh, February 4th. Yeah. The 170s are appealing. Um, but again, it's, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it really depends. It, it varies from stock to stock. So yeah, because during the day these things like move. So you can open up and like, like the night before you can look at it and the open interest is terrible. For example, in the one sixty two fifties. Then by market open, this open interest could be like up a ton. So just keep an eye on it. You have to, these are just things that you'll get used to while you're kind of moving and shaking in the market. These are things you'll pick up over time, and you'll pick up your habit. Like I personally, I go out a little bit farther out too. My main thing is I'm looking at the open interest. I'm looking at how big the, the spread on the delta is from contract to contract. And then I play it by there. And also, I want to mitigate my risk. I don't want to play a $500 contract. I'd rather play a $150 contract and buy a few more of them and do that. That way, if I cut, I can get out a little bit quicker. And because the farther you go out of the money, it's it moves a little bit slower as well. So, for example, like... This is like, for example, the 18250s, as you can see, came down much less versus the 16750s. And this is all based off of the Greeks and the calculations there, but just kind of keep that keep that in mind. Uh H John, I personally don't play spreads. Uh Sung, do you play spreads? No, I, I don't play spreads. Like, I mean <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's that, that that's a whole different animal in itself, right? And so um I think for a lot of people, especially within within our and within the Discord, like we want to keep it as simple as possible. And um, when you start, you know, when you start getting credit spreads, debit spreads, and stuff like that, I I, I think that 
you know, so, selling like covered calls and stuff like that, that's pretty simplistic, right? But but like when you start getting into spread strategies, like it's uh, it can become very complex. Um, I know I know people that do very well on it, but um, but again, our goal is to keep it as simple as possible. So. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of that's that's the goal. Keep we keep it simple. Um, keep your trading strategy simple as possible. Um, I'll do a quick little commercial. Uh, if you guys want to join uh, the Discord slash Patreon, you can. Um, the link's in the description. You guys can sign up. Um, there's full courses on stuff that you get access to for free that teach you the, the breakdowns of every single one of these indicators that you see here and more combinations of them, swing trading, day trading, stuff like that. That's there. The There's also a psychology of trading course that's being built out for the mentality of trading. That's also there. It's got like 30-something videos there. And then I'm working on an options course right now. The first chunk is out working on getting the second chunk out tomorrow. That'll be available to you guys as well. Plus Sung and I are in there. We're alerting our plays um, and we're extremely transparent with what you do. You can see all of our trades and January has been a fantastic month. I know Sung, you've had a great month. We've had a great month. It's, it's been, yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah it's um, this, this um, yeah, this month, honestly, like uh, has been, a great month <laughs> like i you know and um and that's the thing you know I, I, every month isn't isn't you know all it, it's not like it's you're gonna have ups and down up and down months everybody right. does right and that's okay right yeah. just but but the biggest thing is is continue to learn continue to adjust and adapt and and um and and, and just grow your knowledge of you know of the markets so 100 um, but yeah i mean uh yeah but we still got like a, a week left in january <clears throat> i mean i think my overall p l was i this month is i think i'm over like 130 percent oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's so been a freaking it's, good month yeah it's been yeah really, it, yeah it's yeah and i yeah yeah knock on wood it's, it's been a blessing uh, the, you know, uh, trading, having having the ability to trade and to invest into uh, into our future is um, it's a blessing that a lot it of people really don't is. have. So this is, this is what bothers me when people go into it like as in a gambling mindset, because if you're going into trading like gambling or you're doing it without knowing the rules, it's like getting behind an, an airplane. You're going to crash. Right. If you try to get behind an airplane without knowing what to do and like you're like reading someone's Twitter and you're like, oh, uh, so and so said uh st stock abc is going to go to the moon so i'm just gonna do this and you're gonna crash the airplane eventually right you might get some few maneuvers that work out but you're gonna eventually crash the airplane that's why it's really 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 important to put in the time learn what you need to do use whatever resources you want yeah. join whatever community you want you don't have to join our community join whatever community you want but join a community invest in yourself and by the way anything that you spend money on trading any books you buy any courses you buy any communities that you invest in they're all tax write-offs again for education right when you're at the end of the year when you're doing your taxes tell them hey this is what i spent this is what it cost me to be able to trade as my side hustle because it's your side hustle now you can write that off on your taxes so keep that in mind don't hesitate invest in yourself this is what blows my mind people will lose ten thousand dollars blindly trading but will not spend twenty dollars on a book so invest in yourself yeah. learn the rules of the market yeah it's you know and this is the other thing is like um it's great to be a part of these communities and stuff like that but also obviously like uh as ryan has said like invest time to learn how to do this yourself instead of just depending on people's alerts right because <clears throat> people's alerts will only get you so far yeah you know and um and you know so I, i've seen a lot of people blow up their accounts based on only going off of people's alerts yeah. so that's why um, that's why I built those damn courses, man. It took me forever yeah. to build them. I build them because I I want people to learn on their own. And we've seen it. Yeah. Like, for example, rumor in our yeah. Discord. He did what he needed to do, put in the time, and now he's finding plays and doing stuff and, yeah, trading and making really good money. It's like if you just put in the time, it's 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 yeah. literally a science. Time in equals results out. It's a simple equation. Yeah. So um so somebody at uh, H. John asked, any insight into Disney even before this meltdown? Disney was trading at pandemic level prices. Oh, um, long they brought up Disney. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> look, look, uh, you know, Disney is beat down right now. Um, uh, 
like what's the trading at like 137 so yeah. um i'll leave it like this okay i i have a very large position in disney in Me my too. long account and 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 i i don't care i will continue to add because i think is disney is a company that personally i think a lot of people i'm not playing options on disney but from um but every every opportunity i get i will continue to add commons into my long-term portfolio i think it's a company that's deeply undervalued and under uh misunderstood right i think uh, a lot of people don't um understand what um disney truly is it's it's a i mean it's a company that i mean you just have to look at just look at what they own right and technology then, entertainment yeah, and now they're and, into nfts with vv yeah. which i'm gonna do a video so, on that one dude i was buying some some of their nfts on their vv app they've they figured out how to make nfts easy it's, yeah. it's stupidly fun yeah so i think i think long term wise i don't want to put i mean i have price targets like i i don't give out price targets right i don't put price targets but i'll just say it like this like uh disney at 200 it would not shock me <laughs> it should be trading at, yeah, it should yeah, realistically it should. be trading at 200 yeah, because yeah. Let, let's just take it from a pe standpoint it's only trading yeah. at a 33.85 pe and for a tech company because that's what disney is it's a tech company in my personal opinion it's trading at a low pe yeah so i think um I'm bullish on this. They're sitting on a ton of cash too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, financially, yeah, sixteen yeah, I mean, billion of cash. Like it, it, it's just one of those companies. Like, hey, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Kramer said something about it, but damn, damn Kramer. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, the con asked uh, for your long plays. Are you doing calls way out of the money? Uh, no, for my long plays, like for example um I, i'm bullish on like companies like sofi i have a long position with them um <clears throat> so um you know what i'll do I, I i tend to sell covered calls on those so um let's see the reason hold on let me just answer this oh. let me just hit one more point with this uh the con the, the i want to show you this like for example look disney is low iv but for example let's say for example sung loves sofi i love sofi Take a look at these. Your IV or implied volatility on these calls, let's say you wanted to buy 2023 calls for December. The IV is 74%. Once the market calms down and that IV goes back down to 30%, your contract price will get crushed even if SoFi is going up. So that's why like leaps right now are very, very brutal to add into this market because you will eventually get IV crushed and you it will lose value. You're better off going with commons. That's that's just my that's just the reason like I'm not adding any leaps right now. Um, Eric says, I also like, uh, I also like to start by only trading one or two stocks to get into the personality ticker. That's fantastic and true. That's what Sung does with Spy. Um, I personally loved trading SoFi before this drop. That was the one I would trade all the time. Now I've really shifted into just Spy, Apple, and um, Roblox, believe it or not. I've been having a lot of fun trading Roblox, but that's just kind of to kind of get there um will you have another promo on patreon missed out on the last one i will try to have another promo on the picture but i'm i really don't want to go too crazy with too many people in there i think there's like one or two slots left if you want to sign up you go there i promise you'll get your bang for your buck in terms of value there's there's hundreds of dollars worth of value there if you want to sign up um tennessee says following alerts cost me a lot in the beginning yeah following alerts yeah. blindly will devastate you because if you see an alert for example if you see an alert quote unquote that's too late You've missed out on a chunk, or maybe yeah. reversed, and the person cut the play. You've it's like on Twitter. Do not listen to anything anyone says on Twitter because there's a lot of people that are putting out alerts that have no idea what they're doing. And then, so can you talk on that a yeah. little bit, please? Because if I talk <laughs> yeah. about it, I'm going to sound evil. But you have look, you know how to speak. Look, look like um, ask yourself this: when you're taking somebody's alerts, right? Um, how often do they tell you when they cut a play? <laughs> right, Bingo. because there's no one that ever uh gets a hundred percent right if you're back and if they say they do they're that lying bullshit. to you right and so um when you're taking when you're looking at people's alerts you have to see like hey are they are they letting you know when they're cutting and when they're exiting and because <clears throat> sometimes you can you know put out an alert but if you don't if, if, if you don't put out your exit as well then it it, it doesn't it, you're not being fully transparent right and um 
you know, and, and that's the thing. Taking people's alerts will only get you, like I said before, it'll only get you so far, right? The goal in trading and investing is to learn how to do it yourself, right? Um, like they, <laughs> you know. Song, look at the newest comment. Just don't read it. Wait, hold on. Let me, which one? The newest one? <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, SOS so. So. <laughs> <the moon. laughs> man I like that guy too <laughs> so so look uh, i'm you know um <laughs> i lost my total trade of thought it's okay so so um, don't follow alerts yeah yeah you know like you know uh and you also have to realize like if you're you know like what why do you want to why do you want to put money into the market right if, if you want if some people you know might want to just follow alerts and whatnot like that's fine but understand that you're you are the risk the risk is extremely high right and the chances of you losing out on your money is uh extremely high right so and you also don't like for example when sung and i like for example i alert before i add anything yeah. sung alerts before or at when he adds everything and he tells you the limit price right 99 yeah. or i would say i would confidently say 99.99 percent of people who do this will not tell you when they alert. they will quote unquote it's not really front loading and options because unless they're adding thousands of contracts but they will do it before and they could be adding it could be like two three four five minutes later and that makes a huge difference in contracts and options so keep definitely keep that in mind when you're doing yeah. alerts um john says will the stream be available after yes it will be available after you can watch the full thing from the beginning and if you have any questions you can put them in the comments i will reply to any comments or any questions that come in uh is level two data important in your trades not really not i really. mean some people like okay this is the thing level two data is very easily manipulated okay. um uh and and so uh the true order flow data like People on Twitter doesn't it, aren't watching it. They they don't pay for. They don't have right? access so to it. They, they, don't, they have don't have access, access to it. it. They're not. They're not one of these big institutions that have access to all that, right? So, I don't like when you really look at level two data. There's some people that tell me that they trade based on level two data, and I just kind of laugh. So I don't, know how, like, I, I don't know how you would do that because there's like you said, there's a ton of fake outs. Yeah. Some people say they read the tape. I, I I've looked at the tape. The tape move. The tape is the equivalent of a tick chart. It moves way too yeah. quickly for you to be able to notice anything. Yeah, I mean, if, if I mean, if you're if you have the ability to sit there and look at it like level two and really depict it, and and you're making successful trades based on only level two data, man. Uh, you're a props, wizard, Harry. Yeah, props to you. <laughs> Pro, props to you because I can't do it. Um, so uh, let's see. Why wouldn't you? Because we want we want to be oh, nice, Tennessee. Because, we don't look, want to make fun yeah, of that yeah, person. Yeah, that's not I, our job. I, here. We're I, not like that. I, look, like I, you know, don't get me wrong. There's some. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, personalities and um, whatever in social media in the fintwit world. But and I and I respect I respect everybody. Yep. You know, but uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it as that. <laughs> we we'll just leave it at that. By the yeah. way, folks, you can follow Song on Twitter. His link is in the description. He's at Meet Song. Make sure to follow him. He's got a fantastic Twitter, hilarious Twitter, and very great in terms of informational. Emotional damage. Emotional. <laughs> emotional. <to> form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, look, like, uh, sometimes I'll be on TikTok, right? And um, and that Asian guy that does the emotional damage video, right? That is the funniest shit oh, I've ever seen. Dude, did you like, like the song version of it that I sent you? Oh my, yeah, the remix song. I swear, I'm, I need to figure out how to make that my ringtone. I'll, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, I'll get the MP3 clip and I'll send yeah. it to you somehow. Because, and then you can make because, it your, your, your man, ringtone. Man, because that, like, and so I, I, I like uh, screen recorded uh, the clip of him only saying emotional damage, right? So like, it's like... Emotional damage! <laughs> so 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 like so it, it's so funny right so like do you want the hold on do you want for the for the ringtone do you want the emotional damage or do you want the song version of it oh, Which I, want one do you the, want? I want the song version i'll do like, it for I you right it. now yeah so so uh so they so now on twitter every time i see something stupid on twitter i just comment with that video like <laughs> just because some people be just Look, man, I some of people be posting some stupid stuff on Twitter, and I just it's it's hilarious. Like, 
Uh, yeah. I've, that, that's all I've been seeing from Sung all weekend. It's just I'm, I'm like, yeah. why my feed? This, you know, <laughs> the thing that's messed up is it's stuck. It's stuck in my head. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just, it's just it. It goes with so much stuff, especially what's going on in the market right now. It just goes. So I it's, swear, it's, I was thinking so myself funny. that as I, as I was looking at like the the Bitcoin chart, I was like, hey, emotional, no, yeah, emotion, yeah. <laughs> No, Jason, uh, Tennessee, like you're not being a bad influence, man. Like I got much respect for you, man. So I appreciate everything you do. Um, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to make that my ringtone. So I'm going to figure out a way to get that to you. Uh, <laughs> Mount hood biker says, what program are you currently using to track the market with RSI display? This is Weeble, the Weeble trading yeah, platform. We, yeah. Yeah. I use Weeble. Um, I, I also use, use um, the link below to sign up and get a billion <laughs> free stocks, whatever they're yeah. giving you now or yeah. don't, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You, have, you just have to jump through a million hoops to get one free share of Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> so Yo, they're lucky if they get Nokia. Yeah. I know that that's crazy. So um, let's see. I had a friend in high school named Sung. He would barely show up to calculus class and get A's. Oh, that's yeah, probably that, 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 that was probably me. No, I'm just messing with you. I hated calculus. Like I, I, I hate, man, I I hate like math. Like math is like a subject you're gonna use your whole life, right? Yeah. It's something that you're gonna use your entire life. But man, some math courses are just pointless right like calculus like i don't know so we're going off on a tangent but anyways let's see <laughs> let's see uh that's one of the coolest parts of trading together is seeing the transparency in your alerts yeah i mean i i, I truly believe transparency is important within discords and stuff like that it's very important that they're transparent you know i don't really care about transparency on twitter no, no, no. We one don't cares. owe them. We don't like, owe them like, anything on Twitter. Because yeah, I mean, to me, it's like, like <clears throat> I've I've done this on Twitter. Yeah. And the like, you can look at the quote unquote a good barrier. You guys can a good metric is you can look at is is the number of views like a YouTube video we put out gets right. Like, there like there's only forty two people here. I've got seventeen thousand eight hundred followers. Song's got over like six thousand followers on Twitter. You folks are the ones who are putting in the time now to learn about how this stuff works. So like. We owe nothing to people on Twitter, but to you guys, sure, we'll, we'll, get, we'll tell you everything that you need to know or everything that you need because we know that you guys are putting in the time and putting in the effort to learn. So we're going to give you as many tools in your arsenal to become a better trader. Yeah, and look, there's there's a lot of great, um, you know, obviously me and Ryan are, uh, you know, part of a, a Discord, right, and a Patreon, but, but there's a lot of great groups and resources out there you just but you have to find the right ones and you have to find the ones that fit you right yeah. because i mean everybody every discord and every uh you know group has their own trading styles i guess you can say and uh that's to put it gently right so some look for specific low flow so oh you're talking about that <laughs> so talking so, about those know, apples yeah so so you just so <laughs> So you just want to be careful, you know, what you jump into and, um, you know, just, you know, just be smart about it. Avoid getting the emotional damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, that's why, like I used to, I, I used to even alert on Twitter. Right. But I, I, I stopped doing it. It was like, like, um, you know, just, you know, because I'm a, I'm a, I try to be a pretty transparent person. And so if somebody doesn't know how to take their profits and they take a loss, like, you know, and it's very hard to alert on Twitter because by the time you see the notification, by the time you see the tweet, it's too late. Right. So it's just too late. The entry is already gone. And I don't want to, I, I personally just don't want to mislead people like that. Dude, a, so. a guy last night on Twitter went off on me <laughs> because I didn't answer his direct message. And, how am I supposed to get to all the amount of messages in the message request box that I get are stupid. I don't, and I don't even check. Like, you don't? Well, because the message request box, like it doesn't notify you. Right. So no. like, and so like sometimes I forget to check it and then I'll, 
I'll go through and check it sometimes, and I'll be like, oh, man, I feel bad because these people messaged me like two months ago. No, I, <laughs> I, I try to reply, but some of the questions I get, some people would just ask me, like, why is Mar going down? And I, I can't, I'm not going to for the thousandth time tell them, look at the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going down. That's why Mars going down. And sometimes messages just get lost in there. And yeah. some guy just went off. It's like, I don't I, – I'll try my best to help anyone that I can at any time, and – I believe me, there's about as a stupid amount of time that I put onto like Twitter messages and replying back to people. But like, you guys got to respect folks' time too. But I still yeah. can't believe how that, that guy was so disrespectful last night. And like, so I, I know somebody called me, somebody like, I don't, I don't know if I can say on just you know, hint at whatever the word yeah, is. Yeah. So somebody, somebody sent me a DM uh, on Twitter and called me the, uh, the P word. P-U-S-S, -S, oh, whatever. And then uh, I was like, and then I was going to respond and say, okay. <laughs> like, like, okay. No, that's the problem. <laughs> so once you respond, then they can DM you yeah. until the rest of your life. And that, that's, oh, yeah. That's the, pay, that's the annoying thing. I'm like, eh, whatever. Like, and that's the thing, like, you know, it, like, I don't, people's, uh, you know, if, 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 if you spend a lot of time, like, trying to attack people on Twitter, you know what does it really do it doesn't make you any more money so and you can i'll give you guys a hint people when you're trading you do not have time to be on twitter so you, you'll oh, notice, yeah. like yeah. we disappear off of twitter between like yeah. 9 a.m and like 12 p.m but yeah, if yeah. you're seeing people on twitter who are quote unquote it's, trading, it's a, they're not it's extremely like i just don't see like i i've tried it like it's impossible to me it's impossible i just don't like to, because it's a distraction right like social media all that's a distraction right and and um especially if you're day trading or scalping oh. plays you have to be locked into it right you cannot sit there and be worried about um what's going on on social media because if you don't pay attention to your trade it could go sideways very very quickly right so yeah. um you know no one on social media is you know paying your bills for you right you gotta you gotta you know do it for yourself right so my setup is literally i've got three screens where, where you got weeble weeble and then i think I, I got like benzinga here for news and stuff if i ever yeah. use that anymore or not and then i got a, i have an ipad that's just literally for the discord right here on my desk yeah. and i'm just like all right if i see an entry i'm like boom to the discord i copy paste it into patreon i literally i have a swipe thing where i have to, i literally have just two apps on that whole ipad it's patreon to, like boom send buy and then it's i mean i do not have time yeah. to go on twitter and lollygagging oh cool someone posted a funny meme oh cool bitcoin is down so the el salvador president is posting memes of himself with a mcdonald's hat on like i just do not have time for that man i don't have time for that and yeah i want to be in I want to be able to like answer people's questions in the discourse. I'm always like, if I'm not in a trade, I'm answering their questions and like sending them this chart or if they're the crazy, the thing that I've been noticing a lot is like at market open people in this course start, start DMing me in discord. Like, oh my God. I cannot answer this right <laughs> yeah. now, man. I'm trying yeah. to see what, what's going on. I'm yeah. Like, Give me the two minutes. I'll get back to you. I promise. Yeah. I'm <clears throat> like, like typically like, so my setup is real simple. Like I got my laptop and then I got two screens. Right. And you guys and can I'll, see his setup if you go to his Twitter and follow him. His new profile picture, oh, at Meat oh, Song. Oh yeah, I, I actually, no, don't yeah, show it to them now. Don't show it to them now, so they can oh, yeah. follow you on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. So my my setup's real simple. Just two screen, two monitors, and whatever. And and it's real, I keep it real simple, you know. Um, and then he has an algorithm which is working with the hedge funds in the middle, and then it's telling him exactly uh, what to do. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're kidding. they're 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 in this AirPod and. Not in this one though. <laughs> Dude, exactly. there's a guy on YouTube. So I was cycling through YouTube. There was a guy who was like live trading in in one of his ear. He had two pairs of headphones and he had one, he had AirPods and then he had like some Samsung. And he said he had two different discords in his ear that oh, were man. telling him what to buy. Like, how the fuck do you trade like that? I, I can't. Like, I, I just can't. Just spend that. the time I, to learn how to trade. It's less stressful. Yeah. I <laughs> I just look like, I, and that's the thing. Like, I, I think the biggest thing that a lot of people need to understand is like, you know, uh, even within Discord, our commitment to the Discord is, <clears throat> you know, it, it does take time. Like, it, you know, those seconds that it takes to type out alerts and, and, and our plays, our entries and stuff like that. And this doesn't just apply to our just, you know, our Discord, but any anybody that runs uh, a, 
a group, right? Like they, it takes time to do that, right? And um, and those minutes and those seconds really do count, right? So, by the way, this is this is exactly <laughs> why the night before I spend two to three hours typing out a watch list with the levels yeah. of the stocks that I'm looking. So these stocks that I'm quote unquote playing are not just magically being pulled out of thin air. I'm literally using the watch list that I give you guys to trade. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, oh, like on. I can show you literally on on AMC. I was playing AMC puts. Don't kill me. I don't care. I do not give a flying fanuck of who gets pissed. <laughs> I will show you exactly. So I, let me let me actually pull up the watch list from the Discord. I don't. I don't have. Yeah, I don't do a watch list because I only have one stock on it, which is spy. You're you're, you're <laughs> the spy guy. You're the spy yeah, guy. I and just... whatever you do have plays, you give it. You you posted them before, dude. Oh, yeah. Don't don't short sell yourself, man. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm. I don't know how to – I'm screen sharing Weeble. So, so, for example, I said AMC puts, I will scale in if we lose the 1970 support. So I had a line at 1970, which is here we go. 19, excuse me, 1790. So 1790 I set – this is from previous day's numbers. So I had a, a line there at 1970. 1790, mm -hmm. excuse me. I'm an idiot. And then, of course, watching pre-market levels, I added this support here so as we broke this level i alerted hey i'm getting into amc puts and played amc puts it's not like i magic oh you guys can't even see my screen i'm an idiot hold on i said i, I told folks that at 1790 if 1790 breaks if we go a little bit higher this was based on the previous day support as you can see here previous day support 1790 in in pre-market and after hours and then i said hey if it breaks that support level i'm going to get into puts it broke that support level which means that, hey, it's puts time because we also, if you look at pre-market support, which is down here at 1774, that broke as well, identically in the same three-minute candle. So you bought puts and you ride that sucker down and then you take profits on the way down. And then that's just how it is. It's directly from the watches. There's no magical thing that we pulled out of the sky and said, hey, shake the eight ball, give me what stock should I play now? Kaboom. And then, of course, spy all the time. Yeah. Yeah, spy is i think people that know me know that spy is my favorite um it's something that i'm trading trading on a daily song, basis you should, you should switch to the three x leverage <laughs> spy and really screw yourself oh <laughs> heck no <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be like oh my god and then and then next thing you know meet sung's twitter is canceled <laughs> disabled meet, meet sung has no. deleted his twitter yeah yeah so um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, let's see. It says, "OMG, you're shorting AMC." That's proof you're smart. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I don't. It was, I don't, only, it was only a, like a few minutes. It was like I think it was only like ten put contracts or twelve put contracts. I, I don't think I had much of an effect on the AMC price dropping. In case I need yeah, AMC, I mean, is trying to kill me right now. Yeah, I mean, I you know Ooh, I don't AMC I don't, buy the yeah, popcorn. I, yeah, I don't. I don't have any uh, opinion on AMC. Like, um, I, that was fun. Like, uh, eight man, months ago. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like, I hope. I hope it. You know, gets goes to, to ten thousand dollars a yeah, share. Yeah, I like going to the movies. Yeah, yeah. I I hope their market cap it becomes bigger than freaking Apple. I don't know shit. Like yeah. four trillion but, dollar market cap coming yeah, to AMC. Write that down. Yeah, in the year thirty thirty. <laughs> no. 2022 <laughs> on the same day that it pumped last year. Hold on, it's going to be an omen. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go back. When was the day? Song, I'm tired of you shorting AMC. I'm getting real tired of it, man. I'm getting real. Here we go. Oh, the 27th. We passed the next uh, June May 27th. AMC is going to four trillion dollar mark. Yeah, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. Going full port into calls. Hey, deep out the money hey, hundred dollar hey, calls i'm gonna buy them yeah. right now because the market's open for me because i so we're gonna buy february 4th so we're gonna buy hundred dollar calls yeah we're just we can't talk me out of them we're, we're we're completely joking yeah please do, not, <laughs> just, freaking do yeah. that yeah yeah i don't do that now they uh now now i kind of regret saying that because someone someone's gonna be like oh this, this guy's buying him he's an idiot let's do it yeah <laughs> or someone someone's gonna use it against me on twitter be like take a look at this clip of this idiot on youtube yeah they're gonna edit the clip <laughs> now they um no but they you know um yep sorry this thing's bothering my these airpods are you're good man we're gonna end soon too we've been here yeah, for an so, hour and a half yeah i mean uh i not let's see tennessee right uh, ten, so no lambo <laughs> No, Lambo. no, I don't. I don't care about Lambos. No, 
I, I care about I care about my uh uh Honda Odyssey that has sliding doors because I have way too many kids. <laughs> that dude, I remember when you posted that car, I was like, yo, this slaps. Yeah, dude, put put that on the road. Watch how that, that that'll push a Lambo out of its lane. The Lambo is too scared of that car. Look, man, look. I can't I can't fit as many kids as I have, I can't fit all them car seats in a Lambo. No. And you shouldn't can't even be it. putting kids in a Lambo. That, that thing yeah. that thing disintegrates on a car crash. Yeah, so I just I, I don't care about all the flashy stuff. <clears throat> I care about diapers. Do not car go seats. poor. <laughs> this is my advice to people out there. Do yeah. not go poor trying to look rich to yeah. appease other people. People do not care what you're doing or where you're buying, what you're selling. You should be focusing on you. Build wealth, buy stocks, buy real estate. Figure out how to make money, your money to make you money. That's all that matters. No yeah. one cares. I'll be honest with you. How many people, I want to ask you guys, this, ask yourself this question. How many people that you saw today walking around do you remember or do you care to even remember? No one cares. No one's paying attention. Everyone's the main character of their own movie. You do you. Do what you got to do. Make your money. Sung, we're done. Anything yeah. else you want to tell yeah. me? No, I, I appreciate everybody jumping on tonight. Um, uh, I, ho hopefully you can get something out of it, you know um yeah uh yeah um pressing through the sickness somebody said yeah they uh I, i'm i'm making it so Sung's, but sung's a survivor he's got his antibodies now he yeah, sung's got I'm, the antibodies spy watch out we're going I'm, 5x I'm, leverage on monday I'm, I'm good i'm good for six months right <laughs> Is it is it six months or a year? I, I, is, I, I don't know. We can't even talk about that on you. We'll get shut down. <laughs> get get all the boosters. Go get yeah. all your boosters. YouTube I, don't I, cancel this video. I ain't getting I ain't getting shit. Shh, don't <laughs> I'm, just no, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just I'm just messing. Yeah, no, get get vaccinated if you want to. If you want to do what you why yeah, why are yeah. we talking about this? Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Stop. Okay. okay, so anyways, no, I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to join us uh on this video. Um you know, it's, uh, you know, we, um, we really appreciate you guys, you know, so, uh, if you haven't already, if you can hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, we try to do this as much as possible. So, and try to have a little fun with it. So yeah, we, we want, we're, we, we're going to have fun. It's not just going to be straight stocks. If you're looking for that, go watch Jim Cramer or Gordon Ramsey. We yeah. have fun here. We like to have yeah. fun here. We want to make you guys yeah. laugh. We want to have fun. We're here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Appreciate you guys all. Make sure to follow Sung on Twitter at Meet Sung. Link is in the description. If you guys want to join our trading community, you're more than welcome to do so. If you want to, if it, if you believe it's a fit for you, do so. Or you can join any other trading community, any other resources you need. Um, one thing that I do ask you folks to do is, if you can, watch that video that I put out last night on the market going into the next few months. It will be very beneficial for you to understand what's going on, what catalysts are coming up. Uh, it's for you. It's put out there. This is stuff. It's completely free. Watch that video. If that's the best thing you can do, preparing yourself going into next week as to what to expect based off of the market catalysts that are coming. Always appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Peace. Sung, thank you, buddy, for coming uh, uh, no, no problem. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Sung, see you on the other side. I'm ending the broadcast.